All right, moving right along. Oh, from that first batch that I pulled out, I don't think I got to these two items. Just a high-speed steel uh, tool bit. And this side looks like he ground it to do a grooving operation, maybe. We'll put that with the others. This, first, I grabbed this because I just initially thought it was just a piece of steel stock, but now that I look at it, I can see it's clearly got a taper to it. So, I don't know for sure, but that might be a some sort of a taper adapter for use with a something else uh, in the lathe headstock, maybe, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's definitely got a taper to it. Here's a dead center. Well, at least I think it's a dead center. Well, maybe not. This is two pieces. Oh, either that or this is a uh, this is an adapter sleeve right here. Because there's a uh, I don't know what that is on the end there. What's left of a nut or bolt head or something? This is the uh, a wrench, and it looks like the original wrench for the tailstock. There's a half inch half inch lathe wrench. A couple of regular old wrenches here. 15 16 by one inch. Select steel drop forged. And that's a, just a little wrench there. Another one there. It's a billing. Another one there. A couple of big Allen wrenches. Whatever this was supposed to be, I don't know. Same thing with these here. This is something he fashioned for some reason. Welded like a lag screw into this end, so this could be screwed into. So this has got a. Th oh! 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 I know what those are. <laughs> Just occurred to me what these are. Alright, so this is that homemade puller that he made. And I am going to venture a guess that one, if not both of those, is going to thread right onto this. And this becomes a dent puller. <laughs> Old school dent puller kind that they used to sell in the J.C. Whitney catalog. So you just uh, drill a little hole and screw this into your uh, your dent on your fender and give it the old slide hammer treatment, pop the dent right out and then you fill in the hole and body filler and turn it into a Bondo bucket, whatever. And good. Yeah, looks like that. Yep. Yeah, These both thread on here, so that's what this is. Wonder tool. I guess I'll put these with that. Uh, here's a chuck key. Probably goes to one of the several chucks that I grabbed. Unfortunately, this is all, this is all bent up. And it has a little habit of being able to fall off the off part there. Of course now it's jammed on. Don't know what that is. Lucite maybe or something. Some kind of acrylic. We got some uh, lathe tool holders here. There's an Armstrong. What size is this? Boy that's a sharp parting blade on there. Keep snagging my gloves on it. This is a number six, I think it says. R, right for the right hand. No, number three. Number three R. All right. With what looks to be a parting blade that has been ground down very thin on this side. Narrow. There's another one. 
Same thing, another number three R. We got two of those. Here's a bigger one. J.H. Williams and Company, Drop Forged USA. This, left hand tool I believe. Boy that dirty. Carbide turning tool holder. Really? Okay, you say so. Before one of those braised carbide style ones. I don't really see a size on this. Maybe that's what this zero is with a dot below it. Is there a size zero on these? I don't know. This looks like a... Oh, what is the deal with this? This is a boring bar holder, I think. But if memory serves me, is this... The deal on this is... I thought on this style it swivels so that you can do something else with this. I forgot what. That was up oh, there. We go. Oh, just pinched a glove in there. Oh, I tore my glove. Yeah, this swiveling days are kind of. There we go. It's loosening up now. I forgot why, but for some reason I. Thought I recalled that this is designed so you can flip this all the way around like this. And why you would want to do that, I don't know. The V groove here suggests that you would mount a round part in there like a boring bar. How? This is so rusty. I don't really see anything on it. Or a maker's name. Got some sandpaper, abrasive paper. All right. Who could tell me what this is? Because this, this right here, was in the bottom of that box, and I haven't the slightest idea what this is. What we got is we got a chain that's linking together. This U-shaped piece, the chain is welded to. All right, so this looks like something he have, he made up, especially for something. But this doohickey on this side, this looks does not look homemade at all. It's got a couple of jaws that are. Uh, Spring loaded. Okay. There's a little bit of a concave area at the at the mouth of it there. Oh well, okay. That clearly allows you to hold on to stuff with that pretty well, actually. Boy, that's got some serious gripping power when you put that in there. All right, so you want to pull a pin out, maybe? You stick this on there, and then you hook this onto the back of your bumper of your truck, and you run like hell? No, that can't be it. Anybody have any idea what the hell this is all about? Something special. Just like you, Steve. Special. Alright. And the last thing in the bottom of the... Uh, well, actually not the last thing. Also in the bottom of the box, these two little flat pieces of metal here with three holes in them each. Which, if I didn't realize what these were, I could have probably just easily have thrown them in the hardware pile or scrap pile or whatever. But I'm very glad to see these in here. These are the two plates that hold the two half nut sections in the back of the apron. I took the apron off, the half nuts were missing. I found the half nuts in the box, in this, in this box, and I originally thought they were extra half nuts. Then when I took the apron off the lathe and saw the half nuts were missing, I was like, uh-oh. And then I also noticed the plates were missing. 
I think the screws were actually put back in the holes, so I don't think I'm missing the screws. Now I'm not missing the plate. Now let's look at those half nuts. So I got a potential buyer for some of these parts, and he was asking me about the condition of the half nut. You know, because I said, uh, you know, why would this guy have these off of the lathe? You know, possibly indicating there was an issue. Well, I'm by far no expert, but, well, first I was going to say these are very badly worn because they looked like there was hardly any groove in them, but I now am seeing that the grooves are full of years of garbage. But I mean, that's still, well, I don't know. So I'm not sure what the deal is with these. These are just too far gone, and that's why I took them out. For those of you who don't know, they call this a half nut because what happens is behind the apron, when you flip a lever on the front, what happens behind the scenes is there's a cam, uh, like a wheel that moves these in and out like this. You know, out obviously it disengages the lead screw, and then in these clamp down on the lead screw which is turning and then drive the uh, drive the apron for threading and since it's basically like a very long deep nut that's split in half there's your name half nut I'm a half nut all right also found on a shelf right behind the lathe found this surface plate, uh, what do you call this, a uh, holder, uh, blah, 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 blah. oh, I can't remember, <laughs> I don't remember what you call it, I've got several of these, but this is a nice big one, and it doesn't look shop made, it looks like it's a, a genuine one, I don't know what, this is something I've never seen before, somebody has scored these cut lines in the bottom of this very deliberately why I don't know but uh even the, the there's even the vestiges of some paint oh here it is right here this is a brown and sharp marked right on it this is a brown and sharp 622 brown and sharp so uh you can certainly look that up and see what the value would be. This should clean up just fine. I'm just a little concerned about these weird markings on the bottom here. That some the groove somebody made. And then, uh, for whatever reason, this fella had a drill bit in here. <laughs> that strikes me as odd. But that was well, not free, but with everything else that I got I guess way of looking at it. now for the money in that box these gears this uh, lathe does not have a quick change gear box so you need a supply of change gears that you change out in order to get your different threads so I took a photograph of the threading chart on the leg of the lathe, which is fortunate for me because I'll be able to use that to tell me what I need for, uh, for change gears. But just playing this little stacking game to see how they fit together. I'm beginning to think we've got a pretty complete set of change gears here. That's nice. All right. Now, all of these gears are solid except for these two. And these are something else, I think, maybe. Yeah, because these are... Oh, wait a minute. All of these here, this whole stack right here, and this one, 
all look like they're made to fit on the same same shaft. This one, this one is bigger. Oh, maybe not. No, take that back. So I'm not sure what the deal is with this one. Well, they mesh nice. All right. So maybe these two were acquired later or something. I don't know. So let's see. That's that doesn't make sense. That these must have some other purpose, maybe. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight change gears, and then these two other gears, which I haven't figured out yet what the deal is with those. But uh, the South Bend 15 inch lathe, lathe from this era, which this lathe I think we figured out is a 1918, the South Bend 15 inch lathes from this era are far and few between. So it's kind of a double edged sword and, and what I mean by that is you've got a situation where it's a rare lathe so when you go on eBay and you search for South Bend parts for your lathe if you're searching for a 9 inch or I think maybe a 13 or a 16 even you're gonna find a lot of stuff out there you search for a 15 inch the only thing you're gonna find is uh, I think for the Nordic South Bend model or something like that which is a lay that came much later it's a completely different animal so on the one hand you've got the rarity of these replacement parts possibly driving up the value but on the other hand you have a smaller pool of uh, of would-be customers because of the fact that there are less of these lathes surviving out there but anyways at some point I'll clean these all up and figure out what they are I've already got I got a guy who wants all of the lathe, all of the gears out of the apron. I took those out the other day and took some photos, and he needs me to get some more measurements back to him. But he was he wanted to buy the complete apron, and I, I said, well, if you've got a good apron and you just need the gears, I'll take the gears out just because of the hassle of shipping. It's going to cost so much to, to ship that heavy apron. So, uh, but he also said he'd be interested in this. He also has a pretty healthy interest in this little slice of heaven right here. This is, uh, if you've got one of these lathes and you don't have one, this is a nice find. This is a study rest. And, uh, you know, if this was a, uh, a better known lathe, I could easily probably flip this for about 150 bucks or 100 to 150 bucks on eBay. So, just curious to see, I'm just lining this ruler up kind of crudely with the center of that hole, and I'm getting down to the ways here. Now that's interesting, I'm getting about 8 inches, so that, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> Seriously though, uh, I'm wondering now whether or not this is a s for a 16 inch swing. Hmm. This is also narrow. I didn't notice that on the bed. You know, I should have tried this on the bed of that lathe while I was there. Just because this was on the floor under the lathe doesn't mean this is the right study. <laughs> Wanna go study? Uh, oh, you know what? I've got the uh, I've got the old Vernon sitting over here doing nothing. I wonder what I'm gonna put this on. <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> this actually seems to fit okay on the ways of the of the Vernon my 14 inch lathe and I mean yeah sure the center height isn't going to be exactly right here 
but if it's close, might be able to adjust to compensate for that using these, you know, depending how I adjust these fingers, I don't know. That is something I'm gonna have to look at when I get the spindle back on. I could put this on the lathe. I could put this on the ways right up close to the spindle and see how the spindle alignment is with this hole. But uh, if it's if it's a good match, well, I mean, I've got a study rest that came with the Vernon. At least I'm pretty sure because it was with the Vernon. But having two studies on a bed this short, eh, is it really necessary? I don't know. Well, anyways, if this would fit this other fella's 15-inch uh, South Bend, then he wants it. And if I did want to use this on the, even if it matches up height-wise, okay. Uh, the other problem is this, this clamping bar right here is a little too narrow. It barely grabs the underside of the uh, the bed there, so uh, the ways on the bed. So that South Bend, if that's if this, if this was the original study for the South Bend, then the 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 width of the gap between the ways on that lathe is actually narrower than on the Vernon here. All right. Again, I want to reiterate, not everything, not everything here belonged to the lathe or, or uh, but it was part of the deal. Uh, case in point, Sterrett indicator, okay? Um, spotted this. It's on this Mighty Mag holder, okay? Magnetic holder was stuck right to the side of the head on that old, on that milling machine. And uh, he wouldn't sell this previously because he wanted it to go with the mill. I don't even know if he realized this was just stuck on there with a magnet or what. Well, I was like, before we cut the deal and everything else, I said, eh, I'll give you five bucks for this. He said, yeah, okay. So I reached over, popped it off, and said, yeah, there we go. Um, don't even really care that much. I mean, it's, it's, the indicator seems okay, dirty, but but I just thought, hey, it'd be nice to have this uh, this Mighty Mag base. So, actually a little cut here on the back or something. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, that was worth five bucks. Just a plate of steel. I think steel. Oh, hold on. <laughs> solid brass. Plate of solid brass. Nice. Then there was this thing. I saw this. A while back when I went there and we ended up finding out what it was this was originally a kit that had see these two arms right here originally there's a third arm that's missing from the kit that went here and then also what's missing from the kit I don't know what that pin just fell out of also what's missing from the kit is a belt and the way this works is this clamps around the spindle of your milling machine okay and then this arm or this arm or this arm depending on which size arm you need clamps onto here okay and then uh, one of these drive wheels would be probably chucked in your spindle, uh, in your collet, okay, an appropriate size collet. And then one of these wheels here would be riding in, like this one right here, see how this wheel is in there already, okay. And I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure how you get that to hold an end mill. Oh, apparently the set screw right here, maybe. 
But what this is is this this is a this is a, a deal to extend the reach of a small end mill on your table. And we only found one of the listing for one of these, and that one was also incomplete. That one I think had all the parts except the belt. Okay. And we found the name on this somewhere, I think, that day, and that's what helped us figure out what this was. Because up until then, I had no idea what it was. Well, it's funny because, you know, he thought it was worth quite a bit of money, potentially, and probably wanted to eBay it. You can see this has been open to the dirt and grunge for years. And so when I went back there, I had been thinking about this thing because the more I thought about it, the more I realized I should convince him that this thing is not really worth anything and tell him, I'll give him five bucks for this. Just this. Oh, there it is right there. A-E-O-N. So I don't know how you say that. Eon. I think the A is silent. Precision Company, Aurora, Colorado. And there's a place for another number to be stenciled, just stamped in below it, and nothing was ever bothered being put in there. But anyways, uh, the reason why I said, hey, I'll take this for five bucks is because I figured if it fit my spindle on my milling machine, okay, which it does, I can tell just by, I got to loosen that up. But I could tell that's going to probably clamp on there just perfectly fine. So, well, I've seen those, uh, who the hell, Inconol, I think it's called, or whatever, the uh, Indicol, or those, uh, those devices you clamp around your quill on your milling machine, and then uh, it's an indicator holder. Well, I thought, well, maybe I could just rig something up and do something like that with this. Why not? So anywho, so I told him, I told him, I said, I don't even want to use it for what it's supposed to be. I said, as a matter of fact, to prove it to you, I said, I'll give you five bucks for this and you could keep the rest. I could care less. And he said, yeah, he says, no, nah. he, he doesn't care. He just gave me the whole thing for five bucks. So I don't know if I actually find the one person out there in a bazillion who actually has one of these uh, Eon things, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, maybe if they are missing any of these pieces, uh, maybe we can uh, make a deal. All right, and here's some more stuff. Here's the found the handle for that uh, Bridgeport vise. Jeez, you know what just occurred to me. No, I wouldn't go down in there far enough, I don't think, but I need I need to be able to unscrew the draw bar on that milling machine when I get back there, and it's got a square head to it. It might even be that size. Anyways, I was hoping that I would find the wrench in the box there, but I didn't find it. So anyways, that was with that vice. Uh... Here, how not to treat your uh, indicators. This is, underneath all of this dirt and debris, uh, this is a Starrett, probably a Starrett, yeah, this is a Starrett last word indicator that has long since lost its, uh, long since lost its, its uh, cover. That's just a, crying shame. Now, I think you could buy a replacement one for that, but I don't think it's going to be even worth it because that's so that's been exposed to such dirt and garbage for so long. But I grabbed it because it's another one of these nice little magnetic bases. Well, that's brass. I can work on that. Pretty strong, actually. So another magnetic mount. So I'll clean that up and add that to the arsenal. I don't know who makes this. I'm sure it's 
sure somebody who has one of these probably would recognize it right off the bat because it's got this very distinctive yellow plastic case on it. And I don't see the name anywhere. Of course, it could be under this dirt and gunk somewhere. But yeah, you can loosen this up, swivel this around, tighten it back up. And then this one also looks like it allows you to turn it or something. Okay. That allows this to swivel, I guess. That's also got the slot right there for the uh, other style of indicator. So, do something with that. Got a little high speed steel cutter a bit. A piece of brass. Got what looks to be possibly an unused end mill in here. Multi flute long S end mill, 5 16 by 3 8 4 flute. Dolfa. Yeah, I'd say that's brand new by the looks of it. Can't seem to get this cover off. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's brand new. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Some scratches on the end there. Doesn't look like it's been used much though. Brass. This is just all probably brass packings. For playing around with getting the height right on your tool bits here. And this is just loaded with well, that's a parting blade. This is just loaded with high-speed steel cutters. Oh, this is a lonely carbide in there. Wow, well, that made its way in there. A uh, well-seasoned <laughs> dead center. And then these were just up on the shelf by the milling machine. Pretty much nothing to get excited about here. One tap. One coated drill bit. And just some high speed steel. End mills, small ones. But this looked promising to me. Didn't look at them closely while I was there, but I got the feeling these are parallels for use in the vise because they were right near the milling machine. This has got the individual's name on it. Grabowski. We have a lot of Polish people in my town and the town next over where I bought this stuff including myself. So, these two are a match. These two thin ones here are, look like a match. Although they don't look as as keen as these. And then these are all just odd pieces. 